Hello and welcome to Spec Transfer. Today we'll be looking at topic 3.2.3 Transport Across Cell Membranes from the AQA A Level Biology Specification. This is part one of the Transport Across Cell Membranes unit, so if you'd like to see part two, just click on the button bottom left or follow the link at the end of this video. So let's have a quick overview of what we'll be looking at today. We'll be looking at how the basic structure of all cell membranes is the same, including those which surround organelles inside eukaryotic cells. Then we'll look at the fluid mosaic structure of the phospholipid bilayer. For the structure of phospholipids, just click on the button bottom left and the various components that make up membranes and their individual roles. Then we'll move on to how substances may move across cell membranes. There are five different ways listed in the specification. I've seen a five marker at the end of paper one on different ways substances may move across cell membranes. So make sure you know each of these in detail. And then finally, we'll look at some of the adaptations of cells that they have to increase the speed of transport across membranes. So let's make a start. All cells are surrounded by membranes. In eukaryotes, many organelles are also surrounded by membranes. The basic structure of these membranes is the same. Membranes act as a barrier between the cell and its environment, or the organelle and the cytoplasm in eukaryotic cells, and control what can enter or leave the cell or organelle. They're semi-permeable. Substances may move across cell membranes by diffusion. This is either simple or facilitated diffusion, osmosis, active transport or co-transport, but more on that later. So let's look at the fluid mosaic membrane. The structure of all cell membranes is the same. They are made of lipids, proteins and carbohydrates, which are attached to the proteins or lipids. Note that the bilayer is called fluid because the phospholipids are constantly moving. It is called mosaic because the proteins are dispersed throughout the layer. So let's have a look at the different structures found within the phospholipid bilayer. First of all, we have intrinsic proteins in meaning within or inside the membrane. They span the two sides of the membrane. We have two different types channel proteins and carrier proteins. Channel proteins form water-filled tubes which allow water-soluble molecules to pass through. Carrier proteins, on the other hand, bind to molecules or ions and then change their shape to move them across. Next, we have extrinsic proteins, X coming from the Latin for outside, so they're found on the outside of the phospholipid bilayer. They provide mechanical support for the membrane and also act as cell receptors for molecules such as hormones, and they also act as receptors to identify other cells. Then we have glycoproteins, which are proteins with carbohydrates attached. They act as receptors for molecules such as hormones and neurotransmitters. They also allow cells to attach to one another and form tissues, something which is known as cell adhesion. They also allow cells to recognize one another. For example, they allow lymphocytes to recognize your own cells. Next, we have glycolipids. Glycolipids are this time lipids with carbohydrates attached. These also act as recognition sites. They also provide stability to the membrane and also are important in cell adhesion. So finally, we have cholesterol, which is a type of lipid. Cholesterol is present in all cell membranes except for those of bacteria. Cholesterol restricts the movement of other molecules in the membrane, which means that the membrane is less fluid and more rigid. This is because they can fit between the phospholipids and they bind to their fatty acid hydrocarbon tails, causing them to pack more closely together. This helps maintain the shape of animal cells, which is very important for cells that aren't supported by other cells, such as red blood cells. They are also very hydrophobic. Hydrophobic, hydro meaning water, phobic, scared of water, which means that they prevent the loss of water and dissolved ions from the cell. Note that in addition to the role played by cholesterol, the centre of the bilayer is also hydrophobic due to the hydrophobic fatty acid hydrocarbon tails of the phospholipids, which doesn't allow water-soluble substances to pass through, such as ions. 
Great, so now we've had a look at the basic structure of cell membranes and also the various roles that the different components found within membranes have. So next we'll look at how substances may move across these membranes. First of all, we have diffusion. Diffusion is the net movement of molecules or ions from a region where they are in high concentration to one where their concentration is lower. Note that diffusion is a passive process, which means that no external energy input is required. It solely relies on the kinetic energy of particles. There are two different types of passive diffusion, simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion. Simple diffusion is when molecules can diffuse directly through a membrane. Examples of these kinds of molecules are oxygen and carbon dioxide, which are small so they can pass through in between the phospholipids, and they're also nonpolar, which means that they're lipid soluble, i.e. they can dissolve in the hydrophobic bilayer. Then we have facilitated diffusion, which is for large molecules such as glucose and amino acids and charged particles such as ions and polar molecules, which cannot diffuse directly across the phospholipid bilayer. Diffusion of these particles is facilitated by carrier proteins or channel proteins. As you can see, carrier and channel proteins are both intrinsic proteins as they're found within the phospholipid bilayer. Carrier proteins, I'll talk about those in more detail later on. The molecule specific to the protein binds to the protein, the protein therefore changes shape, which releases the molecule onto the opposite side of the membrane. Channel proteins form water-filled hydrophilic channels across the membrane. Hydrophilic meaning that they like water, hydro, waterphilic liking. This creates pores for charged particles to pass through. Different channel proteins facilitate the diffusion of different particles, i.e. they're selective. They only allow specific molecules to pass through. So let's have a look at the different factors affecting the rate of diffusion. First of all, we have concentration gradient. The steeper the concentration gradient, the faster the rate of diffusion. However, as diffusion takes place, the difference in concentration between either side of the membrane decreases until an equilibrium is reached, so the rate decreases over time and will eventually level off. Next we have surface area. The larger the surface area, the faster the rate of diffusion, as there's a greater area through which molecules can pass. We also have temperature. The higher the temperature, the faster the rate of diffusion because particles have more kinetic energy. So they move from a high to a low concentration more quickly. Note that for facilitated diffusion, after a certain temperature, the number of transmembrane proteins becomes limiting. Then we have diffusion path or the thickness of the membrane. The shorter the diffusion path or the thinner the membrane, the faster the rate of diffusion. Next, we have the size of the particle. The larger the particle, the slower the rate of diffusion because the particles move more slowly for the same temperature and they collide more frequently with each other, slowing each other down. Finally, we have the number of channel or carrier proteins and this only applies to facilitated diffusion. The more proteins there are, the faster the rate of facilitated diffusion because there are more points where ions or molecules can pass through. Note that, however, if the temperature is too high, intrinsic proteins such as carrier and channel proteins may denature, so facilitated diffusion will slow down. The number of transmembrane proteins may be a limiting factor when the rate of facilitated diffusion remains constant. Great, so that would be simple and facilitated diffusion. And that's the end to part one of transport across cell membranes. To find out about osmosis, active transport, co-transport and adaptations of membranes, just follow the link at the end of this video.